draft. I'm going to make up a term, call them draft bucks. Draft SKT bucks. SKT <laughs> spent all their draft bucks on getting Renekton early on in the phase, and G2 used their draft bucks on Rise and Zaya. The Rise and Zaya worked out way better than the Renekton, so I expect a change in strategy from SKT for this draft. Interesting, interesting. I'm thinking if G2 now look to ban away the Renekton. No, they're going for the Kaiser ban. Okay, does this mean Renekton first pick for G2, or do they go, or you know what? Fall through. It's got to be Ryze first pick. It has to be Ryze first pick, surely. Like, this pick is just too good for G2 because of how they can easily flex it between mid and top and of how versatile well, it is. Especially now. I was going to say the only way it wouldn't be a Ryze first pick is if the Zaya was up and they had to pick between the yeah, two. Yeah, you're right. But in a sense, SKT kind of made it easy on them and they get it for the second game in a row. And the question is, how do SK Telecom respond to this pick? They don't want to give Renekton up, so I imagine mm. that they will be forced to lock it in here. But what do they do against the Rise? Because while Khan had a solid laning phase, decent pressure, he wasn't able to turn it any into anything greater. And in the side lane, mid to late game, he kept getting caught out. Could not match what the Rise and the Kled were looking to get done. I think that overall, Khan was fine. He was just in a situation where he had to match the rise and every now and then he would get caught out but he still only had like a 0-2-0 scoreline so I do not think that his Renekton was underwhelming I just think the SKT never had an opportunity to fully utilize what Renekton is built to bring into a composition and once again back to draft bucks I think we got to find a yeah. more serious name draft bucks <laughs> it's a little it's too perfect. monopoly I think money. it's perfect as well yeah. all right it's I, clearly I've not been overruled <laughs> So now I'm thinking G2, do they go Varus Tom Kench or do they just go for the Oh, oh no, they're going it straight is. for the Yawn. Right, so we're going much more towards a team fight style of play. Last game, we had a very low CKPM, Jet. I believe you have the numbers yeah. for that as well. Uh, the combined kills per minute last game was 0 0.52. To put that number in perspective, the summer split combined kills per minute for G2 was 1.14 more than double. So if I would have asked you guys before the World Championship if a combined component of 0 0.52 in a G2 SKT game, yeah. who would win? Maybe you wouldn't have said G2, but it is G2 that won a low kill game. Doesn't make it a slow game, but it was impressive. And what I think is great about that stat is coming into this game, I'm expecting it to be higher. Because when you're drafting the Orn, you're yeah. saying that we are ready to fight and we're ready to get into the thick of things. Now, I wonder if it's yet yeah, Yasuo and Braum were the oh, two yeah. picks that I was thinking of yes. to answer the Orn because of how great the wall and shield are for dealing with his ultimate. Love the response from Faker, and I imagine we're going to see it mid, but it could, of course, yeah. be in the bot lane as well. And I've seen play Faker playing everything to counter Yasuo in solo queue and playing Yasuo himself. I'm so excited to see what he can do on this champion if it does not go into the hands of Teddy on the bottom side. Regardless, they will need a mid laner or they will need an AD carry. They know that they're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Perks' Ezreal and a mystery support. But SK Telecom's bans for now remain focused on the jungle, limiting what Yankos can bring to the table since they have already locked in the Gragas for themselves. And I actually really like the Cinder ban from G2 because they know yeah. that this is not a static SKT team. This is a flexible SKT team that can put the Gragas Yasuo bottom if they so choose. And they know that SKT do need to probably fit in another magic damage dealer. So the Cinder would have been the best in that situation, and it's a good ban. Rek'Sai will now be the follow-up. Something that Yanko saw pretty solid success on earlier. What will the final ban from G2 be? Where do they think the Yasuo is going? This is a game that they're usually not playing. Usually that's uh, the op opposite yeah. team trying to figure it out. But they've been here before. They've been up against Damwon. They did just obliterate Gragas Yasuo when Damwon played at bottom lane. Uh, we can get into that if that is what ends up happening here. But we're going to find out where this Gragas Yasuo is going soon. Well. With the lock-in of yeah, the lead it's going, going we know where the Gragas <laughs> Yasuo is going. The biggest surprise to me is the fact that G2 have actually locked in the... Oh. Wow! Wow! Without hesitation, and I'm going to say the same thing I said in the Damwon series. If you're going to draft Yasuo Gragas against anyone, you've got to be damn confident to do it against Perks and Mickey because this is their bread and butter. And the way in which they immediately locked in the Galio suggests to me they have an answer, they know what they're going to do, they're ready for it. And I'm just curious to see where everything's going to go outside of Ezreal uh, as an AD carry and Jarvan as a jungler. I'm not entirely confident with the rest of the picks, but it will be the little block now locked in for Faker in the mid lane, looking to match the rise of Caps. 
And this is going to be, once again, another crazy game, another game of huge draft adaptations. I mean, you want to talk about the OGs, the comfort picks. Uh -huh. Faker is worldwide known for his LeBlanc. Leading into the MSI Finals, he was, un oh, back in 2015, he was undefeated on this champion. He has an incredible record on it, and now he's going back to it, up against Caps' Rise, and it's something that, in a side lane, should be able to match up better against the Rise. And speaking of side lanes and team fighting, that's what G2 has brought here. The Jarvan Galio is just the icing on the cake of what they already were trying to do with the Orn initiation. The Orn initiation could be countered by the Yasuo Windwall. That is close-ish to a hard counter. That's why they're just stacking more and more initiation on top of it if they want to be able to force fights. Look, you just put him in the Cataclysm. You ult him with the Galio. You never have to worry about the Orn ult. You kill the Yasuo first, then you use it. G2 Esports clearly with a blueprint for success, but once again, they have to respect Khan on the connect, and they have to respect Clid's Lee Sin. We have to see what Teddy and Effort can get done on this Yasuo Bragus following. We talk a lot about these two mid laners and their roams, and I think the Faker, because he's playing LeBlanc, is going to have a lot more control in this early matchup. I imagine he's going to be looking to roam actually up towards topside, which could give G2 an avenue to hard play through bot. Mid lane, again, is going to be very important playing around their side lanes, because when G2 played up against Darmwans, Yasuo or Gragas spot lane, they hard camped that lane. Will SKT let that happen again, or will they shut it down? And everyone in the Policia Vista Alegre, whether they're rooting for SKT or G2, is looking for five games. So the question is, can SKT fight back? And I think they've got the tools to do it. Faker, 25 and 6 on LeBlanc. Undefeated domestically on this champion. Yes, he dropped a game at MSI, but and the LCK has not found a loss. We'll see if it is the case here as we move into our second game. Who will find the edge in the early game? Now, personally, I'm a really big fan of SKT's comp. I think they have a really strong and easy side of the map to play around. I think Clid is a phenomenal Lee Sin player. And I think that if he just easily leverages the pressure that he will have in top lane and in mid lane, it's very easy for SKT to try and shut Yankos down, especially in the early game. My biggest question mark is how will they play and defend around bot side? We were already talking about it before. I think the Perks and Mickey will be able to get push in this lane. Will G2 look for an early dive? Because I imagine they're not just going to let Teddy and Effort free farm in this 2v2. But if the game does break into the mid-game with G2 at good gold, it's so interesting. When I was looking at the champions on G2 side, I'm thinking, man, this is comp they could really run over the game with if they start getting a lead because you wouldn't be able to stop them from fighting. So it's going to be very interesting to watch as they were spotted on this three-man invade. Potential 3v3, 4v3 as Faker starts to move in. G2 have been caught out. Mickey stepping forward. The body slam over the wall. The taunt is going to come in, though. Effort will be pulled back. Effort, I think, is going to go down for first blood. That's not what they wanted. First blood will drop. Yanko smiting just to live. Trying to make his way out. Conqueror now. Proc is going to blast on out the flash away. But Faker is there. Wants to get the damage down. And that's going to be it. The kick. Faker will secure a kill in return. So support for Jungler and a little bit more gold onto the Galio and a little bit less onto Faker. Even though G2 gets more gold, that has to be good for SKT. Getting the first kill onto Faker and delaying Yankos' jungle start. Not only did he flash, he used Smite to try and stay alive. We'll put him behind in this game. Yeah, I completely agree with you, Jack. I think that the fact that Yankos fell down means that he is going to be very late to his first camp. Jarvan doesn't even have the strongest early clear, and the biggest issue for G2 in making this early play is that they did not have the early sweeper. Yankos yeah. did what he did where he invested the early ward and then traded it later. We more. But now we see more action in mid. Caps, now it's retreat. Level 2 is coming in. The chain has connected. Caps forced to flash to safety, but Yankos is here in the darkness. Level 2 now coming in. Does this get follow in? Flag and drag. Flag and drag. That's all it's going to take. Yankos looking to body block. Will not get anything else so close. The flag and drag was likely on cooldown because Yankos was actually level one clearing that buff, but that was a close one, getting flash out of caps. So we're already seeing way more action in the early game than what we saw before. A lot of it was actually incited by G2's early invade with which SKT reacted to accordingly, but we're getting to see the early power of this Lee Sin paired up with the LeBlanc as well. The chain setup is very potent, especially if there's no flash against the opposing mid lane. And important to look at this bottom lane, because in the last time we saw G2 play against it, they were able to dive on this specific wave, but yes. Yankos is delayed because of what happened, and they are unlikely to be able to make a play right now, even if Yankos is in river. It does mean that Yankos will secure the Scuttle Crab, and I think important to note, the breakneck pace minute. of this game. Wait a minute. Try. Very risky. No, Body slam could interrupt. This. Tornado is prepped. 
anyone. They can't. They can't. It's it's too risky. The wave just isn't there. The enemy minion wave is. What am I talking about? It's G2 Esports. Yeah, level plus three. They're gonna gamble it. Yanko's only level two. Mickey can leap in. Oh, Yanko's got level three as well. Are they really yeah. gonna try and force this? Perk's very low. Can't just if rain Mickey down can damage. If they get the far. aftershock proc, they can tank for a while. Good bit of poke coming in. They That's a lot of wasted not time. To. So. This was overall a massive loss for G2 because in the meantime, Clid was stealing away the enemy blue buff. So he's going to take that away from Yankos, who's already behind in terms of his early clear. Caps cannot roam down as well because, again, as we talked about in the draft, Faker will have pressure in the early game. So SKT are leveraging where they have pressure on the map. They're playing safe. And so far, while the bot lane is behind, this Yasuo has at the very least avoided an early dive. Taunt has connected. Perk's looking to get a little bit of damage down, but the wind wall down comes out. Mickey with the aftershock will be able to back away for now. Perks and Mickey sustaining pressure on the bottom side of the map. I think important, you already brought it up. La last game was slow, it was controlled, it was mm -hmm. steady. But with a Yasuo, with a Gragas, with a Lee Sin, you have to feel like level six, and we are going to see a very explosive pace of game. Now, what I want to note is on the minimap, you'll see this very small ward that has been thrown into the enemy jungle. Mm -hmm. This is what Khan loves to do with his pressure. When he pushes in, rather than just put a ward where you can see from Wonder just in the river, he likes to get deep wards in. He likes to know where the enemy jungler is and what he's up to. And now, he's just got vision on caps. He's soon going to get vision on Yankos. And this enables Clid to move around the map a lot more freely and look for better opportunities for his team. I think that's a good call out and we're going to need to track whether or not Clid can get something done specifically in that mid lane. They know they got Caps's flash down on Rise and if they can actually get Faker's LeBlanc significantly ahead of Rise, they would have a chance of stopping that Rise monster split push that ended up being one of the biggest reasons G2 won the first game. Now we can see Mickey on the roam once again. He is hanging around mid lane. He will be spotted out by Clid once again, though. And this is why it was important to note that Perks was delaying the backs from Teddy and Effort to give Mickey the freedom to move up towards mid. But importantly, it gives Caps the opportunity to push out this wave and relieve some of the pressure from Faker. Huge trade in favor of Caps there. Faker not wanting to burn any of his mobility there. And it will cost him a decent amount of health. Of course, last stack of the Corrupting Pot does not have TP, has the Ignite. Oh, Mickey. <laughs> Cheeky, little, cheeky steal. Little plays like that to build up the overall pressure of SKT. That delays Clid's level six. It means his gank might not be ready before Caps is also level six. All of these things that G2 is doing, including crashing the wave, including interrupting the recalls, their pressure is building up a little bit. And you can see it with the 500 gold lead. Wonder, TPing right back into top lane, getting more aggressive early armor. Obviously, very easy for him to itemize against this Renekton in a natural path for him already to get that Iceborne Gauntlet. And on the bottom side, Perks and Mickey continue to be confident to step forward, knowing Clid is on the top side of the map for now. Level six, though, I think, is where this lane might just shift away. Body yeah. slam in, trying to extend the trade. As you get a few more levels in the Yasuo, it gets much easier to collect all of the CS once it hits turrets. So I don't expect this CS lead to advance too much further. Very easy, as you can see, for Teddy to get every single CS that crashed there, and the lane is kind of neutralized at this point until they hit six or until they get ganked. What I do like about the Galio pick into this matchup is typically, especially around level four, five, and, and even six, uh, SKT can look for an all-in, but Galio makes it very hard because of the taunt that he does break. Now we see Jungler hanging spotted. around the bots. They're now stepping in. Yankos is on the way. The taunt is going to connect on both. The flag and drag comes through, and Teddy now has to run for the hills to dash through. The tornado can buy him a bit of time as he retreats. The rest of the team now collapsed. They're only going to be able to grab one, but a clean play from G2. And Yankos was just laying in wait. They'd accumulated some of that pressure earlier by delaying recalls by getting the Grom Steel, and they convert it with that kill. But SKT goes straight back for the Drake. Khan can come over the wall. Open Caps checks. Faker can set it up. Chains come out. Khan is he willing to flash under tower to try to secure this one? Caps trying to make his way out safety, but it will not happen. That's going to be the kill. But the Dragon trade. has been stolen away. Clean play coming in from Yankos. Blow for blow being matched. So trades keep coming in from both sides. A big, I'm a big fan of this roam down from Khan. He didn't have his teleport, but neither did Wonder. So the fact that he gained, he sacrificed priority top to be able to move and join his team enabled SKT to find a kill onto Caps. But because Faker was mid lane, it ended up giving Yankos the opportunity to go for a 50-50 smite, which he ends up stealing. Watching this gank one more time, it was pretty much all about patience. It was a faked recall by G2. The cast didn't give vision. They say, okay, let's clear this wave and reset. Nope, can't do that. Very easy kill picked up onto effort. Yeah, Flawless chaining the CC, and this is something that we've seen G2 uh, before. 
So this is the important thing. Note that it's three versus two. Even though Perks is not directly there, he has the ultimate available. Because Faker moved mid to find that kill, yes, this LeBlanc is now going to be that much stronger, which is still great for SKT. Or rather, Khan is going to pick up that kill. Either way, advantage gain there for SKT. The loss of this Drake is definitely not something that they wanted to give away as well. For now, G2 holding onto a small gold lead. And after a disastrous level one where they gave a lot of gold over to Faker, things seem to be balancing out. We'll have to keep our eyes on the mid lane, however. This itemization for Caps not going to be as potent as this early Luden's Echo from Faker when he does complete it. Only nine minutes, a little bit away. But Khan, Wonder, still going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I feel like top lane's an island this game. I don't <laughs> think we're going to see as much there. Yeah, I agree with you, Dracos. And uh, you mentioned the gold a little bit earlier. Ooh, Faker now roaming. We'll get back to that in a second. I did just cast your curse. This is not an island. Yankos is here, and Yankos is very vulnerable. Faker doesn't want to commit any more resources to this play. Chipping away. We'll just back off. Yankos chunk, but nothing else going to happen. And even if Faker has been able to get a few chunks down onto Yankos, the side lanes for G2 are still in a beneficial state. I think that Ocean Drake steal is very impactful, especially as this Ornn versus Renekton lane continues. Like, if, if Renekton is going to win that Ornn lane, it's even less likely to happen with the Ocean Drake keeping Ornn healthy all the time, because no way Khan kills him in one all-in. It would be a series of trades that stack up over time. Yeah, I like that you mentioned that, Jet, because when we look at the gold dispersion, you can see that Wanda is only like 200 behind in top lane. But yeah. Perks has a massive advantage in bot. All of the gold sits in the mid lane for SKT, which means that there's a reliance on Faker being able to move that gold around the map. And right now, he's looking to do it, as he has, as I said, on Yankos. James will connect on Yankos. Yankos locked up. The follow up is there. Clid looking to finish this one off. The ulti has come out. You can use the unstoppable flash away to safety. Faker goes in. He gets the auto, but Clid will burn him down with the red buff. SKT did expend a lot for that, though, as G2's looking for more. Caps now coming in. The taunt will be able to connect, with the knockback is there. Clid get Whoa. by the double. Caps trying to delete Faker, but Faker goes invisible. Realm Warp now coming out. Caps looking for the fancy footwork. Will take him out to safety, but Mickey has to run for the hills. Justice Punch will get him away. And a massive team fight win here for SKT. Khan with another good roam to force Caps to use his ultimate, but this was a situation where Yankos did not have cooldowns. Faker using the pressure that we wanted to see him have find a pick, which converts into another kill onto Perks, and now SKT are starting to claim control over the gold lead. And all of that was while Teddy was bottom lane, so they're going to convert plate gold onto the Yasuo as well. So while G2 had been kind of holding on with the overall pressure, if Faker and Clid can now get in there and start transferring this 2v2 power throughout the rest of the map, that would be SKT's path to victory. And as we look back at this play, you can see Yanko playing very cautiously, but the amount of mobility present <laughs> on a LeBlanc and a Lee Sin just means you cannot get anything done. And burning the flag there, while it does give Yanko's information, ultimately costing him his life because he cannot flag and drag out to safety. And the important thing here is that G2 think they can now get a pretty good collapse, but a great ultimate from Effort wow. just before he gets taunted means that Clid can actually just blow up the Ezreal, who at this point in the game is very squishy and... Uh, a lot of summoner spells being forced out there from G2. So we talked about how SKT do have a draft that is that much stronger in the early game. And in game one, G2 did a great job of avoiding these fights. But this time around with Faker on the oh, LeBlanc. Kick over the wall, Clint! Wow! Putting on a Lee Sin Clinic as Perks goes down. Unable to react at all. The CC chain comes through from SKT. And this was the early game presence that we were talking about. G2 don't get to slow the game. Uh, slow the game down this time around. SKT utilizing their pressure much more effectively, finding these picks, finding these kills, and gaining a much solid early game advantage. And this is why we talked about Clid when we prepped for this series. What he can get done when he finds advantages. You can see how incredible his stats are. But what does Caps do if mid lane goes awry? You just leave. You go elsewhere. They're going to try and attack Khan up in this top lane. Caps is kind of disappeared into the jungle. Let's see if he can make a play. Not going he through. catches Clint. will be locked up. Galio on the way in too. They're gonna lock Clint and everything. That's a little bit of revenge for Perks in the jungle. Caps has this uncanny sense to go to the right spot. Who else in the world does that? Where you just loop around the jungler's raptors, giving up mid priority, but it gets them the shot on onto Clid, it gets them control top lane, it gets them control back of mid, and it keeps them in this game. And the cost is that Yasuo is getting so much on the bottom side, but if Perks and Mickey do not go down here, it is just going to be the Herald in favor. Taunt goes in, that's big damage going on into effort. Luckily, the Aftershock has been proc. He has to run for his life, but Mickey caught under tower and taken down. Perks with plenty of mana, though. 
Where's the ulti? The cooldown still very far away. Won't be able to grab anything else. The Herald will go down uncontested in favor of G2 Esports. And the skirmishing is that much more intense this time around. But the things that we wanted to track in the early game, we have to come back to. The Yasuo in the bot lane has had a free laning phase. He fell behind initially at the start, but now he's caught up in farm with perks. He is level 8. He is getting to those item spikes on the Yasuo, and they even secured first tower in the bot lane. Faker is 3-0 and 2 on this LeBlanc. So everything that SKT wanted to happen in the early game has now happened. And now with a Mountain Drake backing them up as well, it's going to make the side lane threat, if left alone near those towers, even bigger. And a team that normally I wouldn't be concerned about taking Baron now has a very real possibility of doing so. As we take a look back at, well, yeah. Clid's monstrously sin. Shifts in for Faker. So now Clid knows Shift is down. He says, okay, you're dead now. Uh, he technically had Flash, but there's no human that can react to that play in time. <laughs> <laughs> Very strong statement. No human being can do it. Faker's not human, so I mean, maybe he would have been able to. You need to be a deity or a god. Sorry, buddy. You got to work your way up. And of course, very back and forth. Highly contested early game once again. Last game was slow. Yes, there were kills traded back, but it was not nearly this explosive. And at the end of the day, gold just about dead. Even Drake traded for Drake. What is impressive to me is I'm having a quick look at the gold right now, and Caps has actually built up a 100 gold advantage over Faker. Faker's 3-0 and 2. Yeah. And I think a lot of that actually came from the top lane plates that were funneled into him mm -hmm. when he made that roam up towards top side. So even though he was down in laning phase, Caps is now becoming yeah. this side lane threat, which is very valuable for G2 as they enter the mid game. And again, we're seeing a move down bottom lane. They want to get caught. Ulti coming out, but it will not connect. He's under the tower. Wonder needs to make it out to safety. He's going to dash away, but Khan will not be taken down. In the meantime, Yasuo has already dropped a tower. Teddy getting a lot of work done. G2 behind the play on this one. When the dive went awry, Teddy got so much in extra turn. And Khan needs to be able to continue to do that because that can open up the map in a huge way. In game one, G2 was able to get that four-man dive down onto Khan. Here in game two, Khan is successfully able to defend and SKT get the pressure on the other side. And why does this look like a reversed version of game one? Because the team swaps sides. <laughs> Now it's G2 on blue. I was Game referring to like, they're SKT. contesting the point, top Chad, lane really tier like two. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Did you really just sell? You're, you're supposed to be, not. Nah, you're supposed to help me. I really like, <laughs> Mr. LEC I mean, he makes, he makes a really good point, okay, man. I'm just thanks. saying. <laughs> but I understand what you're trying to get at here, Dan Dracos, <laughs> which is very much that SKT, they're trying to play the map. They're trying to play the side lanes. It feels like that they're the ones answering well whenever G2 tried to force something. And that's because you're right. It is largely thanks to the early game leads that SKT have built for themselves. And we keep coming back to Faker, but a lot of it is also about Clid. We yeah. highlighted what he can do on this Lee Sin in the early game, and the maps that he sets up for his team, the way in which he utilizes vision, and how he works with the pressure that he has to get deep vision, gives the freedom for SKT to be able to make these plays on a side lane. And now the onus is on G2 to try and find those team fights. They're now in SKT's shoes, um, similar to what SKT was feeling in game one. And with Orn approaching level 13, he'll be able to upgrade Perks' Trinity Force when he's able to get there, inject some gold back into G2 to potentially give them a chance in a team fight. And Perks in general is a player that I want to watch this game. He got instantly killed in the first bot jungle fight by a good E from Effort with his E and his flash up. And he died the second time also with his flash up. He's been... I feel like the best Zaya at the tournament, maybe the best Kaiza. Those two champions have been immaculate for him. We haven't seen much tape on his Ezreal, so he needs to also have a big game with all these things that are trying to get on him and one-shot him. If he can avoid that, it can buy G2 a lot of time in these fights. This could be his moment. G2 is grouping up in the mid lane. SKT is poised to answer. Khan has TP. There's no vision bot side. But with the wave in G2's favor, I'm not sure if SKT want to force it. All it takes is a single good cask or body slam to end a fight in their favor. Faker waiting in the darkness. Look at that vision setup from SKT. No one in G2 can walk into that jungle. Yeah, thanks for drawing attention to it, Dracos, because you can see how much control they have over the bottom side and how little G2 can actually see. They have to use their pressure min, they have to group up as four in order to move into their own half of the jungle. But once again, it is caps on a side lane. Yep. The rest of SKT trying to barrel down mid, but Faker is looking to respond. And Faker has to match. The non-teleport LeBlanc is going down there to match. So for now, just caps is split pushing and map instincts 
have been so valuable for G2 without his roam into the top jungle or his split push presence. This game would likely be snowballing in the favor of SKT, maybe three or 4,000, but Caps is keeping them spread up. And what a story for Caps this has been. The gamble that he took, leaving Fnatic, a team that yeah. made it to the World Finals last year. And honestly, he had a disappointing World Finals mm -hmm. last year. Rookie made him look like a fool. He was outed and he was obliterated. And many fans said that he just could not compete. He choked against the best in the world. But at MSI, he had a better performance. And now he is one of the key parts of G2 that is enabling them to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with SKT. And even Caps' summer split looked underwhelming based on some of the early expectations, but so far at Worlds... He wasn't even on my top 20, Jack. Yeah, it wasn't. What are you doing, Betty? <laughs> he was, I think he has been G2's best player so far at this World Championship. I agree, I agree. And it's an interesting trend for G2, because it always feels like one player is the rock. The source of consistency when everyone else on the team wants to take these high risks, and for this tournament it has been Caps. The question is, can they take this fight? Mountain has they been started. In for it. Faker? All right, I'm gonna walk in. Mountain Drake goes down. G2 have priority over the mid lane. Perks has to be very careful as Faker fearlessly steps forward. The knock will not connect. Khan waiting in the darkness. That is a big Renekton. The Gragas cast could turn everything. Clit has been taunted up. They're trying to lock the CC together. The knock will connect, but Clit still manages to make it out. And Caps zooming in and out of the fight. SKT need to pick their moment, but G2 not able to get anything done as the wave is just deleted. Well, ultimately. SKT walk away with a Drake. They keep them in tower alive. They're going to use this opportunity to reset. Caps is actually going to realm warp the minions in so they can siege just as a reset is coming through from Khan. He's going to TP back in. B, Teddy finds the knockup. Khan is there. <laughs> a little too, little too late. Baker low on mana probably has one more combo left. Khan comes in. Ornhorn comes out. Windwall has now been used. The knockback is there. SKT just looking to disengage. There will be no follow-up from the last breath on Teddy. Yeah, I think G2 played that well. As far as teleporting in and not having the angle on the Drake, they did a lot to just cut off SKT's access to mid lane. And then even after their original minion wave died, most teams would say, well played, SKT. I guess we lose that one. But they just realm warp the next minion wave in, and they get an additional teleport of SKT and still get the mid lane turret. And as good as it is to have that mid lane tower, it is a trade for game long power in the form of the Mountain Drake for the mid lane tower now. So the question is, what can G2 get done with this mid lane open? But also, what can SKT do with this mountain? Because one of the things we often see G2 do is two man Baron takes. Yasuo is exceptional at securing Baron as long as he has a bit of a front line. He can have Clid do it, he can have Khan do it, it doesn't matter. But when you have double mountain with Yasuo at two, maybe even three items, SKT could sneak this one away. So vision control around this objective is very important for G2 because you always have to respect that possibility. And as you mentioned earlier, Jad, as we get later and later, the good news for G2, even if there's a small gold discrepancy and even if the mountains are stacking up against them, is that Wonder will be able to get some of these items down. Has yep. upgraded already the Trinity Force on the side of perks. He's at that two item point we always like to talk about. Caps a clean flash out to safety. Would have surely been death, but now they're still trying to follow up. The taunt is there to stop Baker from going any further. Caps now on the retreat. Phase Rush has come out. Perks going into the midst of everything, but the knockup is there. The last breath, and it will be Caps' as the shutdown comes through, but Perks is not done yet. He wants to make the difference. Yanko sleeping in. Will they re-engage? He gets the shutdown, and now they're in the Cataclysm. Pecan is into the backside, and Perks gets cut down. The sweeping blade from Teddy. Yet another knockup. Wonder wants to turn this one. Wants to find the knockups back onto Khan, but it is not enough. And this is a monstrous performance from Teddy. This is the Yasuo dream. No one can lock him down as Khan, Teddy, and Clid tear through G2 Esports. Goodbye to Mickey. Goodbye to Wonder. That will be the ace for SKT. Okay, Teddy's Yasuo is clean if there were any doubts before that fight. And what a brawl that ended up being. Caps initially avoids the engage. SKT continue to fight through. And both teams opt in. Now with Double Mountain, they want the Baron. But Caps... He's back. We talked about it, a fantastic tournament so far. SKT, they're not going to fully commit. The health bars are simply too low. That could have been his moment, but SKT will not give him his shot. And it's Woo! SKT punishing Caps once again. They found an opportunity to Caps. do it in game one. Now Caps is staring Five death in the eyes. Oh, he's even they're list. desperate to let him know, but he can't hear you, Madrid. He can't hear you from the grave as he gets cut down. 
He's running for the hills, but it simply will not be enough. Caps gets taken out. Oh, ho, ho. He's buying time, but that's going to be it. Faker grabbing the kill as G2 desperate to get some vision down. The only bright side for G2 is that SKT have not reset yet. Ooh. They're going to delay the resets even They're more. In mid. And Ezreal just tears through towers at this point of the game. 200% damage on the Sheen procs. Everything SKT does just feels like it takes so much time yeah. against G2. That is actually a death for an inner mid lane turret. A lot of teams actually just take that trade, even though it feels like Caps would get uh, the loss in that trade, but he delayed enough for SKT. He took enough of them low that they had to burn their recalls on it, and now we're just reset yet again. And what a series! <laughs> yeah, can it's we just appreciate it? It's not only game two. Let's appreciate what happened. We're gonna watch this fight one more time. So instant flash there to avoid the knockup. And then effort, it looks like he might actually die, but he ends up going all the way through to start the initiation. Now Caps wanted to use the phase rush to get the bonus movement speed to get out of that situation. But the chains are just so long that Faker was still able to find the binding and that's what allowed them to collapse. But you can see the damage that came out from both perks and Caps to allow G2 to get the re-engage, which they think is in their favor. Oh, but it's not. And, and this yeah. what's your move replay. You can see Teddy's move is just to style on every and also Khan, who had an underwhelming game one, made a great play this fight to close the distance onto Perks and help combo up with Teddy. So Khan actually got most of the kills at the end of that fight, even though it was the Yasuo who did the 5k damage. And really, just the difference in build once we get out of the damage graph here, it's going to show you a very different story. It was Spirit Visage, it was Titanic. This game, we're back on the Spirit Shoujin for the next end. We're back on the Black Cleaver, and this man has to be respected. Five, zero, and two on this champion. And this is still anyone's game. We just saw Mountain Drake being taken, but it's only a 1.3 thousand gold lead, and SKT's actually doing Baron on a control ward. So either they do a 50-50, or they fight right now. Alti's coming out. Wonder wants to knock it over the wall, hoping to stop the windmill from responding. Can they get anything done? But no, Baron has gone over the Cali wall, burned a little bit earlier. SKT are just going to back off. They're gonna get five members strong with the Baron. G2 were not ready for the play. The double mountain with the Yasuo with just straight up confidence coming out from SKT to know that they can melt that down. I wonder if they actually saw Mickey on the reset knowing that they had the numbers advantage because the way in which they just forced that play to me suggested, okay, there's no way G2 is gonna be able to answer in time. And as we saw, they walk away with it with all five members. And they never let Yankos get in range to force a 50-50 effort used the ultimate to peel him away and the flash was down from a previous fight so they felt relatively safe with that secure but that's a gutsy call here because if SKT give up a Baron there they'd be staring a 2-0 deficit in the face they need to close out this game to make it a 1-1 as we check in across the board for itemization double masterwork items for the Orn on the top side perks finishing that third item alongside the QSS SKT will be uncontested for now on this tier one tower Next flash coming in as Mickey will just retreat, but have to give respect to this SKT lineup. The LeBlanc, the Lee Sin, the dive threat here with the Yasuo last breath as follow-up. It is very difficult for G2 to push forward. Still threatening and clearing out the waves for now. Faker playing with fire. Yeah. <laughs> he distorted in just for a few autos. Wait a minute. And now gets his passive burn by perks. Faker a little bit lower, but that's the top lane tier two down. And this oh, is Faker. the largest lead that either of these teams have had so far in the series. Faker might die. If Perks lands. Alti, Faker, dash away. Doesn't fall for it. <laughs> Almost jinxed him. Does not need to dash. And Mickey just trying to be a vanguard there. Body block for Perks. Now, SKT would like to just reset. They still have a minute left on the Baron. They had pings coming down onto the mid tier two and the bot tier two, which clearly suggests that they want to try and break these tier two towers down before the next big fight occurs. Uh, and they should have the time to do it. And G2, they're now on the back foot. They're playing much more towards the scaling aspect. Their team fight prowess is still strong. But we're seeing from SKT is that SKT's composition, because of the Yasuo and the Gragas, it's very easy for them to start things. As long as you get a knockup, the Yasuo is going in. And as long as SKT keeps starting fights on their terms, it's always difficult for G2 to answer, largely because of this wind wall mitigating Wonder's ultimate. I agree, but SKT also have to make something happen with this Baron buff. It's definitely true. Teddy now stepping forward. The knockback is there right under Perks. Perks now going to leap out to safety, but it's not going to be enough. Teddy trying to cut him down, and he will find the kill. Teddy getting everything kicked off the last breath. Coming in, the combo of the Gragas and the Oswo so clean, but now Faker's been locked up over the wall. Maybe they can find the kill, but no, the distortion will take him back to safety. G2 just doing what they can to hold on after Perks drops. 
That's a huge play for them to try and actually get some turrets because SKT also got a Baron in game one. They were unable to get a meaningful enough advantage for them to be able to win that game. This time, though, they get the pick onto Perks, and they have 27 seconds left on this Baron to try and break in hips. They need to pick their fight. They need to pick their moment. But they're running out of time. Mid lane will break. The inhibitor now next on the list. Four members moving up from G2, but it might mean giving up bot lane if they go to contest. The wave now crashing in on the bottom side. Khan and Clid ready to threaten. SKT will retreat, though, happy with just the mid lane inhibitor, a sole pressure point for the next minutes. Very clean play overall from SKT. Yep. Little to criticize, they've now ballooned the gold lead to about 6k. It was a very tense mid game, but the way in which SKT have been executing these fights, their punish playstyle where they were able to catch members of G2 off guard, out of position, and out execute them on fights, is what has now led them to this positioning. They're set up to bring us to a 1 1. There is still room and opportunity for G2 to bring this back, but right now this is looking like the SKT game. You see Perks putting the Arcane Shift there, means he can't get away, and an easy fall from Teddy. And once you are behind in a trade against the Asawo, you're pretty much just dead. Ooh, the timing on that flash to close the distance as well as avoid Wonder's horn. Very big for Teddy. He's got to be sitting on a large amount of gold. Yeah, Teddy's on 2.7k. Wait to see what he ends up upgrading here, because it's the Asuo who'll be looking to hard carry these fights now. And it's going to be the Bloodthirster. <laughs> Just trying to match the damage up, but it is only two damage threats on the side of G2. And I think it's important to note that while G2 go in very well, they do not get out very well, which is the difference for SKT. Mm -hmm. SKT can dictate a fight, but with the kick, with the barrel, they can also say, no, this is a fight we do not want to take. Whereas you saw there, Perks, if he ever gets caught, no one can save him. For me, one of the biggest differences from this game to last game is the fact that Faker is on a champion that can match Caps' side lane pressure. Mm -hmm. We have not seen Caps generate the same threat on a side lane that he did in game one. And a lot of that is because even though Faker is only running Ignite, Caps can't afford to overextend anymore because he can actually die in a 1v1 against this champ. And I think additionally, instead of a 0 2 Renekton, it's a 5-0 Renekton. That so also helps, yeah. He too can match the rise. Like, the champions are the same, but the game itself is played in a different way. And I think with 52 seconds on the Baron buff and no vision yet acquired by SKT, this is where G2 need to get in there first and try and set up a pick. I mean, how many of these games felt like they were about to break until G2 found a pick? So that's what they need to go for here. They actually just see Faker, no teleport, no mana. It would be a moment for them to try and do something. Still giving a lot of respect to Teddy, though. Retreating in the mid lane. Faker not even backing yet, still confidently stepping forward. Interrupting a little bit there. And SKT just exerting their dominance, setting up around this Baron. 23 seconds until it respawns. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little surprised Faker's sitting around with such Lamana. His, oh, his blue buff is up, so he's actually not going to recall. But yeah, they're fighting bot lane. Caps now trying to use the Realm Orb, but baiting. Now going to try to step away. Khan will find the knockup. Wonder now coming in, wants to get something done. Caps is going to be in trouble. Khan gets in and gets out, takes down Caps. Wonder just has to be next on the list. Teddy and Khan should be able to walk this one down. The Orange does not have enough damage to kill both of these champions. Knockup's going to be there in just a moment. Wonder taken away, knocks down both solo laners, dropping in that exchange. And this is Khan's game. He is stepping up in a huge way. G2 needed to try and create that two-man si two-person side lane play that had worked for them throughout the entirety of game one. 5-0 Renekton, man, what are you really going to do in that fight? He just destroys Caps. Looks like whatever it is for G2, it was not enough. And now, with only three members of G2 alive, SKT can easily move towards the Baron and secure this objective. We were talking about how this looked like SKT's game. G2, it's very difficult for them to come back. With the draft that they have available to themselves, mm -hmm. it's going to rely on a massive mistake from the side of SKT. And with this Baron buff, this next push should be the things to settle it. You know, watch this duel one more time. Khan also has a GA with the Sojin. It's the cooldowns, and it's all about access. Can Caps root and run with Phase Rush enough? Because the Slice and Dice followed in the right way, and then also because he just has so much burst, yeah. you never even get the Ornhorn to come through. Great execution there from Khan. Very Rolling little Teddy, size. though. Galli Ulti is going to come out. They're trying to disengage. They knock him through the ultimate, but Teddy just goes golden, buys a bit more time. The TP now coming in. Yankles will get deleted before the fight even kicks off. Perks still dealing so much damage. That's the Orn ult, and maybe it will be enough. Khan steps forward. Faker trying to get something done, but he's focusing on Wonder. He's ending. not going to be able to damage, but Clint wants to end the game, but Caps is going to run more around safety. Caps is trying to win two fights at the same time. Windwall will not be enough. Unstoppable. They will defend the base. They will win the fight, and G2 hold on. What just happened? <laughs> Why didn't Clint fight? Clint pushed mid lane when the team was fighting and G2 was able to get an extended, an extended 5v4 down on the bottom lane. 
Click gets one Nexus turret, and G2, they repel the Baron push. They stay alive. <laughs> wow. We talked about how SKT needed to make a massive mistake for G2 to stay into this game, and that was the mistake that G2 were looking for, because as you rightly said, Jack, this was a split decision from SKT, and I think Teddy is playing this about near flawlessly as he can, right? He gets the stopwatch, he nearly solo kills Yankos, he's just waiting for the TP to come through, and keep your eyes on the minimap rather than the fight. Clid is walking in with the minions, and he's like, if all five members are there, let's just try and end the game with the Baron buff. And while the fight is taking place, Caps then notices. He throws out yep. the Realm Warp in the middle of the fight to say, okay, I need to get <laughs> back to my team. Oh, and then he's able to stop Clid while Perks had enough left to finish off Teddy. That's the type of play that keeps G2 in it. Well, and this is the thing, G2's composition. This is the front-to-back team fight you're dreaming of. When the enemy team only gets to hit Yankos, Mickey, and Wonder, you're having a great time. When you're split up, everything gets harder. And for SKT, it just feels like miscommunication. Now, the good news for this team is they're at a 7k gold lead. Yes. Yeah. They still have Baron. They are not out. That game, that did not cost them the game, but it will cost them time. And time means more opportunities for G2 to find yet another play. Exactly. Yeah, they still have Gragas Yasuo. They still have a level 18 Renekton with Sojin. The GA was burned in that fight, so it's still like, no matter what big of a gold lead, a 3v5 or a 4v5 can still go to the team with less gold, so that's what G2 is looking for. They're hoping for a pick onto Teddy, who is down exhaust, or they're hoping for SKT to split themselves up again. Looks like SKT's main focus is going to be on the Elder Drake. And G2 will okay. just push mid. They have control over it for now. They have the bot wave pushed in as well. No inhibitors are down, and a bit of vision will come out from Perks' ultimate, but... Just trying to secure mid lane prior. Faker will back, does not want to remain chunked out by that Ezreal ultimate. He also finished his death cap, but that recall is going to buy enough time for G2 to get the they inside track in. onto the oh, Elder. They're going to rush it. They, they, have, rush it. they, they should have to absolutely be very rush careful. It. No, they're just going to rush it. Mickey's, Mickey's going to try to body block. Just wants to make sure that Click can't get into the pit. They need to shred through this one. They can get something done. There's no Yasuo there to body block. The cast comes oh, out. Oh, he stole it! I can't believe it! In the moment where it matters most, and Teddy now instantly has backline access. Disaster strikes for G2, but the Galio is now coming in. He wants to turn it, but everyone is dead as Mickey hits the ground. Every Everyone on his team drops. It is a clean fight for SKT, and Clint is the hero they were waiting for. The jungle level difference was huge. It was a level 16 Clid to a level 13 Yankos. G2 had to keep him out of the pit to secure that Elder. They could not do it. Clid found the way in, and with a team fight win, SKT are going to equalize the series. And this series is defying my expectations. If you would have told me Baker takes a bad recall, and then his jungler bails him out with the beautiful Elder Dragon Steel, I wouldn't have believed you. I would have told you to get out. Faker does reign supreme because Clid comes up clutch. And it feels like for SK Telecom, it is no longer Faker and four randoms. Clid is here. Yeah. Teddy is here. Effort is here. Khan on Renekton. Redemption in game two after a mediocre game one, let's call it. And this is what I was looking at before the series. When we think of SKT, we think of this really experienced world juggernaut. But really, Faker's played seven.